Good morning, pregame crew. How are you doing? Get this microphone closer. Good morning. It's Friday the 13th, May 13th, 2022, 8.21 a.m. Eastern, 6.21 a.m. Mountain Time. Good morning. How are you? Hope you're having a wonderful Friday the 13th. Hope you slept well, you're rested. If you're not, don't trade today. If you're not on your A game, if you have travel today, you have kids finishing school today, you have a busy day, don't trade. As retail traders, it's our superpower. Audio visual check, please. There he is, Chuck. I can get my morning started now. Hey, Neb, me, myself, and I, Rosemary, Empower, Lisa, Roger, Jorge, how are you? Bennett, VB, Night Truck, Robert, Greg, how are you? You know what? I'm just going to go through. I have no chart request right now, but I'm going to get started with a, char a chart request that I know that's out there. How about that? So what I do every morning around 630, if you want to fast forward, if you're listening later in the day, you can fast forward to this says 630. I'll get started with indices, commodities, crypto movers and shakers of the day. It is my goal to get you ready for the trading day and give you just an outline of structure of the day. Yesterday was one of our best days, I believe. That was the most clarity I had going into a trading day that I've had in a long time. I think I shared with y'all I was in fasting state, so I don't know if that created flow state, but going to try that a little more because that really did work. So I'm going to go over AMD because I see that Robert's on here. I am optimistic the semis could have their day. I'm not saying they're going to. I'm optimistic because the semis, if we look at yesterday's action, semis were pretty weak. AMD was red. Intel was slightly green. Qualcomm was red. NVIDIA was red. So today I'm looking for semis, and what do I tell y'all? It's the fuel in the engine of the market. And if we want this market to get through these four hour bull flags and confirm trend changes, I believe we need the semiconductors to do that. So what I'd be looking at if I were looking to trade AMD is I would look to, let me fib this, possibly buy around either 87 or $86 on a pullback for some type of dip for a potential move up because semis are lagging. And sometimes we play laggards, sometimes we short canaries. It, it, I know that it's sometimes the correlations, looking for divergences and confluences can be confusing. But today I'm looking for Apple and the XLK and semiconductors to step up because they sure were weak yesterday. And if they can't step up and take some of the pressure off XLY, consumer cyclical, consumer discretionary that carried us yesterday, then I think we're going to have a problem. I'm currently short the market. 12198 NASDAQ, I am short, and I will cover if we get above that high of 12208. All right. I have some more requests that's coming in. Hey, Camo Monkey. Hey, Veronica. Roger, thank you, Roger. Hey, Helena, Malachi, Casey, SBND, Larry, GYSL, my girl Tammy, Keith, Dan, Chris. Tammy, was Amazon yesterday amazing or what? Wonderful, Chris. That's great. You know what, Chris? I'm glad you made money, and I like to always just be real with y'all. I lost money on Tesla yesterday. And, of course, it reversed, and I would have made a lot of money had I held but I had comments. I bought the dip here in pre-market. Let me see where I bought it. Right here in pre-market, right above 69850. And then when it dropped below 697, I got stopped out. And then it just zoomed higher. So I had commons. It's no big deal. I had a great day with Amazon and shop. But it was very frustrating that I got stopped out and took a loss there. So... It happens, you know, but you, we have to follow our rules. We can't just be willy-nilly. This is my business. Trading is my business. It's not a hobby. Hobbies lose you money, typically. Businesses are in business to make money. So if you're losing money, you're most likely treating this like a hobby. And this isn't a hobby. If you want to give me a follow on Twitter, I'd appreciate it, at Lori. If you could hit the like button, that'd be great, too. Thank you. Okay, let's see. I saw... 
So let's go over Tesla while, while we are here. Tesla's getting a little bit of a tailwind. So overnight, Elon came out and said that he may be putting this deal on hold with Twitter because he doesn't know the subscriber base is legit. And then he came out this morning and said, again, a few hours later, and says he intends to buy Twitter. So the Tesla shareholders really like that news. Tesla has not liked that Elon could be splitting his focus. So anytime Twitter positive news of the acquisition comes out, it has actually been bearish Tesla. So if that deal were to be put on hold, it could behoove Tesla. Then when he came out this morning and said, I still intend to buy it. I just want to make sure we're verifying the right numbers. And then Twitter got a little pop on that. And now we have a little bit of an EQ setting up. So Tesla will be interesting today. You are always susceptible to news headlines when you're dealing with Tesla. So just know that. Let's look at XLF. I haven't looked at XLF this morning. Hey, Michelle, if I answer that definitively, if we're going to be red or green today, you need to fire me as your pregame show host because I have no idea what's going to happen today, but I'm just gonna give you the more likely scenarios. So on higher time frames, the more likely scenario is to have a red day. On shorter term time frames, bulls have Momo on the four hour, hourly and four hour. Hey Topher, how are you? Okay, XLF, nice bounce. And XLF has been very weak. They close red today, so XLF would be another sector. XLF, Apple, and semis were to get going, that would be really great for the market. So wait, let me back up on XLF. Weekly not oversold, daily oversold. Four hour has enough room for a higher low, but not necessarily hourly has enough room for a higher low. So eager beaver, eager beaver bulls will be looking for a higher low compared to yesterday's low, 32.41, trying to nail this bottom of XLF. And what are we running into? The Great Wall of Louisiana. I like to jokingly call the hourly 50 MA. If you're interested in my chart setup, you can click on the link below in the video description, and it has a link where you can click and get a PDF explanation of all my bright colors. Affirm is on my list. You missed it, Tammy. That's okay. We're going to be around a long time to be trading Amazon, right? So it's okay if we missed it. Okay. Tilray looks good. A little concerning, and I'm not going to do the trend lines because of time. But this looks like it could be a rising wedge, so caution, caution. We're running into the 30-minute 200 MA, but that's not a big resistance typically. 475 resistance, we hit 469 in after hours and 485. Bulls have plenty of room for hourly higher low and a four hour higher low. So the way that I would take this today if I had no position is I would look for five minute oversold or 15 minute oversold. Since it's marijuana, I'd really make them prove it to me. Look at that 15 minute 50 RSI hold. That's beautiful. So let's go back to the, nope, not that. Tell me when RSI gets oversold on the five minute and I'll assess where we are as a market. How's IWM holding up? Cognizant that we could have a 30 minute rising wedge. That's actually a classic rising wedge. A rising wedge is you get higher highs without a lot of follow through. This is classic. So be cautious if you're a Tilray bull. Be protective. Hey, Bo, how are you? Hey, Madison. Oh my God, Madison. That's so funny. I'm like, I, if Madison's going to be here today, I shouldn't talk about Dwayne. That's so funny. I had a Dwayne analogy this morning. Maybe I have to reassess that. I'm so happy you're here though. Okay. It's 830. Let's get this party started. Hi, I'm Chart Guy Lori. I'm part of the Chart Guys community. We teach technical analysis. This is who I am. If you want to give me a follow at Chart Gal Lori, you can check us out on chartguys.com. And what I do and my partners do is we help you with the trading day, constantly posting news. This was commodities today. We give a rundown of this morning, dollar, gold, oil, nat gas, copper, silver, even very specific Corn December futures, which by the way is a very bullish chart confirming the weekly bull flags as commodities and ag products continue to be bullish. So that's what we do. And what I do every morning here at the pregame show is I go over the indices, commodities, crypto, movers and shakers of the day. And my goal is to get you ready for the trading day. I have notes that I, I try to follow, 
make sure I get all the details from my analysis the last few hours. And then I copy these notes when we're done and I post them in the Chart Guys community chat room so our members can have access to them to mark them up. All right, let's look at ES. I'm sorry it looks super busy with the fibs. I'll take them off in just a second. So if we go from the last high on the four hour from May 11th to the low of May 12th, we are at the golden pocket retrace of 3982. 3982. Hey Judd, hey MG. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate you. So we are at the golden pocket resistance on ES. So we have a little four hour bull flag that's confirming right now. Let me look at it on the two hour. It may be a little clearer. A little two hour bull flag that confirmed. And I would say these hourly higher highs are getting followed through. So I wouldn't call it that we have a rising wedge, but odds favor a four hour lower high here. Odds favor a four hour lower high compared to 40, 40, 50. Odds favor a daily lower high compared to 4303. Odds favor it. Okay. Now let's look at NASDAQ. Is NASDAQ better positioned than ES? No. Now NASDAQ is getting a little bit more of a bounce. We're approaching 0.618, but ES bounce is a little more developed. RTY is more developed. It's over the golden pocket. And YM is right at that 0.618. So we're kind of catching up with one another. I would say it's more of an even playing field. So I'm going to delete the fibs. And then I want to go back and look at everything relative. Just pick an EMA. You know how you're driving, I know in Louisiana, I don't know if it's the same driving test everywhere, in order to ensure that you're two seconds, at least two seconds or more behind the person behind you, that you're not tailgating, you find a benchmark on the side of the road, like a, a sign or a, a billboard. And then you, once you pass that billboard, you count one, two, well, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, and then you know you're not tailgating. Well, that's how I feel. That's how we use the EMAs to benchmark. How are we priced relative to those EMAs? So ES, we're sitting on the 4-hour 21 EMA. NASDAQ, we're sitting on the 21 4-hour EMA. RTY, same thing. Dow is slightly under it. So I would say the Dow is just slightly weaker than the other three, which makes sense with XLF weaker. We have BA with a weaker setup. So that kind of makes sense. So I'm not finding any canaries, but let me go look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin is over the 21 EMA and ETH is below it. So Ethereum's bounce is a little bit weaker than Bitcoin. And Bitcoin gave us clues yesterday and the day before we were really all over it. And I wouldn't say we're getting a lot of clues yet this morning. So let's go back and make sure you have all the key levels. So support 39.51, 38.55, and your next resistance is that key 4050. I don't think I have an alert set there, so I better go set it right before it. I just want I want to know if we get in that area. So we have resistance at 40.45 and 40.50. So right now we have a healthy bounce. So if hourly gets overbought as we're looking for a daily lower high, let me let me say that a little. I didn't write this in my notes. That just occurred to me. Reverse back burner. Reverse back burner has been serving us. Okay. So what I'm looking for is hourly overbought. Did I do that right? That didn't feel right. No, because I did 30 instead of 70. I'm so used to doing 70. 30. Okay. So it, if it's overbought, if hourly gets overbought, as we're looking for a daily lower high, that's typically a good area to short the market. Okay, we're getting down in the weed jaw, but I think we're on to something here. So that would be 4027. So tell, I already have an alert for it to tell me when it gets hourly overbought. And right now that estimate would be around 4027. So if we get in the 4027 area, that would be an area to start looking for a top fish, trying to nail that daily lower high. Okay, I think we're, that made me happy right there. NASDAQ, that level is 12351. 12351. It's this area over here. Can you see my arrow? 12352 area now. RTY, 1783. YM, 32348. And now I'm going to turn this RSI off because it gets busy as well. I'm going to go back. I gave you the ES level. Now, NASDAQ is way up here at 12553. 12553, that is the key resistance. And then as we're watching for that potential hourly overbought, so go tell me when RSI 
gets to 70 for that reverse back burner attempting to nail the daily lower high. So my Dwayne joke, now that my daughter is on here and I'm a little bit nervous to say it, but you know, if you have a significant other and they say they're going to do something and then they say they're, they're going to do something, I'm going to get a job, I'm going to get a job, I'm going to get a job, and they don't get a job, it's like you just keep losing faith in them. I'm going to get a job. Nope. I'm going to get a job. Nope. You didn't get a job. You just keep losing faith. You have no confidence in that significant other. Well, the same thing with bulls. I, I mean, I can't trust these bulls as far as I can throw them. Beautiful bounce. Enough room for a four-hour high or low. But in the larger scheme of the things, have they proven themselves to be a wonderful human being? No. They are not trustworthy. We are in the no trust zone with NASDAQ. We are in the no trust zone with ES. So knowing that, yes, we're looking for a four hour higher low on any pullback, but I know the more likely scenario are bearish top fish. The probabilities are set up more in favor with the bears than they are the bulls because of their reputation. Their reputation precedes them. Down, 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 down. All right, RTY. Key resistance, 1792. And it's funny that I'm, maybe I'm picking and choosing and I'm not being objective, but this looks more like a rising wedge than the other ones. YM, key resistance, 32506. Okay, we can see that Hang Seng, uh, two points up 2.68 overnight. That's positive. The DAX is up 1.58%. And Mr. F, I don't know if y'all know him. If you're not a Chart Guys community member, you don't know him, but I call him Mr. Fabulous. Every morning, he messages me around 9.30 my time, which is 11.30 Eastern, to remind me of the European close. We can typically get some reversal. So if we're flying high into 9.30, it can actually signal a reversal to the downside, and the inverse is true. So I, I have a calendar reminder every day for 9.30 my time, European close, just for me to watch out for any type of sudden moves. All right, so that's the Dow, Hang Seng, DAX, VIX. Okay, VIX did it. So I posted in the room this morning. <laughs> I see you, Jason. Uh, okay, here. So this is my key takeaway on the morning. VIX at key inflection point right here for market direction today. Broke daily support by nine cents, which is pretty common for VIX to break support or resistance by a few pennies and then reverse. Market bulls want to see this daily support break with follow through for confirmation of potential four-hour bull flags. Well, look at this, looky, looky. We had a daily EQ, higher high, 36.64, lower low, 24.94, high, lower high, 35.48, higher low, 30.69, lower high, 34.76, and lower low. So VIX rolling over is a beautiful thing, but I am still bullish the VIX as long as the 50, the RSI of 50 is holding. We want to see 50 RSI break and we want to see it melt. Y'all know what I'm going to say? Like an ice cream cone in July on Louisiana cement, concrete cement. We want to see it melt like an ice cream cone. For the VIX to melt down, go below 50 RSI on the daily. That would really behoove the market bulls. Now on any bounce, I would just be looking for a bear flag with the size of this pullback. So that gives more points in the favor of market bulls. This chart, market bulls want to see this all day, every day. Bitcoin, I went over. This could be a rising wedge too. This is not super convincing. Does it look better on the two hour or clearer? Yeah. We're getting these little higher highs, a lot of follow through. Doesn't look great, but let's look at that retrace. If you're a... a Bitcoin bull and you missed this bounce, you're well over the golden pocket. So the Bitcoin bounce is more advanced than the indices, but we're coming in hot to resistance at 32,185, and we have plenty of room for a four hour higher low on a pullback. I knew I'd get you, Jorge. I knew you'd laugh at that Ethereum. Okay, so Ethereum is not as advanced as Bitcoin on its bounce. Let me show you what I mean by that mathematically. We're not at the golden pocket. We're not even at the 0.618. Where Bitcoin was up here in the 70 to 75% range, we have Ethereum here in the 58% range as far as retrace of the size of this bounce, yet plenty of room for a four-hour higher low. Gold, 
Gold, they have thrown out all asset class classes. They have thrown the baby out with the bathwater. We are still in downtrends. This four hour bear flag is confirming. Let's see, 1809, broke it by a dollar, bouncing a little bit. It could be a four hour double bottom, but you can't trust these bulls. You just can't trust them. On the monthly, we're, we're looking for a higher low. We're here at the 21 EMA. But where are you? Where are you? Where are you? I don't see them. Where are they? 1827 is your resistance to change that trend. And silver still has that 1975 level that I'm watching. That's not a double bottom. We broke it by seven cents. It's a little more of a convincing break. But let me show you why I'm looking at 1975. I've sho I showed you this level yesterday. And that's right near that weekly 200 MA. I'm very interested in that level. We're not oversold on the weekly. We are oversold on the daily. I'm looking for a silver position. I think someone asked about silver, but I'm looking for a silver position. But crap, where are the bulls? I can look all day, but if they're not going to show up, it doesn't matter. Oil is getting interesting here for bears. For bears. We have the Baker Riggs. Hugh, Baker Hugh Rig. Count, Baker Hughes rig count. You say that fast. Today, I believe at 1230 Central. Please verify the time if you're trading oil. It can have an impact. Looking for a daily lower high compared to 111.37. So we have a nice retrace, enough room for a daily higher low. But bears are looking to step in on this action. Bears are still looking to step in. And bulls aren't giving them a window yet, but it could happen. Odds favor a daily lower high. Nat gas. This one looks even more appealing to me as a for a daily lower high. Look at this weekly candle though, y'all. Jason, what's the name of this candle? Long tall Sally lower wick. My goodness. This weekly candle is shaping up to be a doozy with bulls buying that dip. But on that daily, odds favor a lower high. And on the four hour, this looks like a rising wedge to me. Hourly bulls keep buying the dip. I was looking at the 15 minute this morning and this is when I was assessing it here. But man, we may be getting our window window right here. A window. I see sometimes Louisiana just kind of creeps out of my mouth. See what the bulls do here. If they pause here at 792, this may be the window to short net gas. Let's see. Bull volume still looks fine, so proceed cautiously. Apple. Uh, Queen of the Mountain right here. If you want to screenshot this. Hey, and welcome to everybody that joined this week. If you're a first time listener for this week, not this show, or maybe this show or this week, put in the comments. Let me know because we definitely, the viewership has been going up and it's just been a lot more fun. I'm just so glad all of you are here and taking time out to hang out with me so we can get ready for the trading day. So I believe I said most of these things, but I want to just say out loud, XLY carried us yesterday with Amazon and Tesla. And I showed y'all that on the heat map here. Amazon, Tesla was green. It went red toward the end, but consumer just cyclical looked really good. So today, we need XLK and semis to step up, wake up. And if the financials could wake up, Katie bar the door. That would be amazing. So XLK and semis. Semis, I got my good eye on semis today. And market bulls on sidelines need to continue to have serious trust issues until their bull buddies on the front lines prove it. Okay, went over all of this. Went over all of that. Okay, now we're at the queen of the mountain set setups. When I say queen of the mountain, these are just setups that I have a higher conviction uh, on. Apple, I typically cover it just because, but Apple slowed down the market yesterday. The market, in my opinion, was ready to run. Looking under the hood, we had a lot of names, a lot of things going in the right direction, and Apple kept weighing on the market. So if Apple can get its head out, it's, you know what, then the market could get a lift. I think there's still a top fish of 147 out there on Apple. And I'm being careful, 146.63 is probably the, that's the more aggressive level. And even 147, I just, we have paused in that area, paused in that area. So Apple needs to wake up and do a moonshot in order to bring this market higher over this, the resistance that we have, or we're going to end up with a four-hour lower high. Affirm. 
Oh, it's your first time here, Nipon? Nipon? Welcome. Hey, Chili Effect. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been called Long Tall Sally a lot, so I'm very familiar with that term. Okay, I want to do that again. Let me put that back up here. Affirm has a little short squeeze going on. Affirm had earnings yesterday, and they affirmed their relationship with shop. You see what I did there? So any pullback to $21, even though that sounds like a very large retracement, that could still be a bull flag. So I would look for five minute back burner. So back burner alert, you just do five minute. Let me know when RSI crosses 30. If you don't have a position, you're looking for that first five minute oversold or your fishing pole could be wait for tightening ranges and say, I'm waiting for an EQ and I'll position myself long at a potential higher low on the five minute, two minute, 15 minute, whatever you're watching. Great move, but caution up here. Okay, Arch. If I give you earnings dates, if I give you dividend dates, if I give you dividend amounts, if I give you earnings amounts, please always know I suffer from this condition of being a human, so it may not always be completely accurate. Always verify on your own before taking trades, because when you push the buttons on your account and your money, that's your trade. Dividend May 27th per trading view of Arch Resources Coal of $8.11. Now, we've, done, we've seen what happens when names have big dividends. Case in point, Zim, look at that $17 dividend and major pullback. Okay, so I'm not expecting this to hold beautifully once we get to dividend day, but this could be a weekly bull flag forming. So we have earnings over here July 27th, so they're a non-issue at the point at this point, but I am looking for a potential position to grab this dividend. So I want to pull back. I want it to keep pulling back, or I'm looking for a bottom fish of yesterday's low. So we're up pretty well this morning, but I would love to bottom fish 151 on Arch for a swing position. So I know I normally give you, I know I normally give you Queen of the Mountain scalping day trades, but for you swingers, I thought I'd bring something for you today. So we have a beautiful setup on Camping World. Camping World had a great day yesterday, and it has enough room for that daily high or low. I don't know that we're going to get over 31.12 in one fell swoop, but it looks like the bulls are trying this morning. So I like Camping World. Let me see my notes here. Had a set up for a potential daily trend change, short float of 41%. Oh, and Arch has a short float of 33%. And Camping World has a dividend of 6.32. It had a great day. So at this point, I think the trade setup is a potential five minute back burner. Let me just, as, as always, I walk you through these. Let me know when RSI crosses 30 on the five minute for a potential position to grab those dividends and a potential swing trade to get that daily higher low. NVIDIA, I'm watching this one more than any other name. NVIDIA needs to get over yesterday's high during regular trading hours, get over 167.88, get over the Great Wall of Louisiana, the IE, the hourly 50 MA, NVIDIA has room to run. I can't stand this. It's already up 4%. I wanted along on this. So I'm playing NVIDIA as a potential lagger. So one thing I could do, since it's up so big this morning, is tell me when the first five minute gets oversold. But I'm looking for positioning into a semis. So I put SMH over here on my watch list because I don't know if I'm going to watch NVIDIA itself. SMH... So I kind of changed directions after I typed this. SMH is only up 2%, where NVIDIA is up almost 4%. So maybe the play is buying semis, and I would do that through SOXL, a leveraged instrument caution. But maybe buying SMH pullback makes more sense. It's not as extended here in pre-market. Rad. Rad is rad. Y'all want to see something cool? Jason's going to love this. He probably saw my post already. Sorry about the little earning signs, but if you look here, look up here, right here at low, January, so the year of 2019, the low was 504. Low hit yesterday, 502. Holla. That is awesome. Look at this. Rad has a short float of 31%. So we have a, a yearly double bottom. I love a pullback buy to 524, trying to nail that hourly higher low and try to nail 
wait for it, that yearly double bottom. How cool would that be? Probability super low. Probability is that it keeps going through $5 because momentum is to the downside, but the risk reward is beautiful. Okay, now let's have a silent moment for OAMD oh, is your baby, Francisco. It's your baby. That's right. Okay, shop. Did any of you catch shop yesterday, our queen of the mountain trade? Gosh, that was the best. Was yesterday the best day ever? It was our best pregame show for sure. 100% accuracy, pretty much. XLE was weak during the morning and then got stronger. So, 305.30 was that Mars level that I told you my six-year-old nephew could pick out on a chart. And we bounced from there. But today, I would be looking for a 15-minute oversold. So you see, we kind of pulled back on the five-minute yesterday. We pulled back pretty hard. We gave a lot back. So I would look for a potential 15-minute oversold trade for a potential back burner. And then the other thing I had in mind for shop is a potential iron condor. We had a large range yesterday. If the market gets choppy today and we're around 336, excuse me, 347, let me get this box out of the way so you can see it. 347 is the 50% retrace. If price makes it to 347 without any news involved, Odds favor, we're going to stay within that range. This could be an awesome iron condor. Problem is the shop spreads are terrible. So it would be pretty hard finagling that limit price, but just something to keep in mind. Tan? Okay, this is a good one. Well, crap. You had not bounced this morning. First Solar got a huge upgrade to $90. It was up 6.5%. So I was looking at... Since for solar is already up, you know, it's a large holding within tan, and tan could pull back. But bottom fishing 56.33 for a tan bottom fish. So we broke this low yesterday by 54 cents. But it could be a monthly double bottom. They bought it as if it's a monthly double bottom. So with that in mind, I think a, it would be cool to bottom fish. And trading, it's a business. We're not trying to be cool. So excuse some of my adverbs and adjectives. But a, I would like to buy that 56.33. I just like that. But I need it to come back. I can't buy it up here. And also remember, NVIDIA I like in semis because it has that potential daily falling wedge. Forgot to mention that. Tesla. All right. So Tesla is having that bull push. We went over it earlier. You have support at 750. And don't forget yesterday's high. The 75966 is your first support, and then 750 is your second support, looking to buy Tesla on a pullback or some type of tightening pattern. And then Twitter, Twitter, ninjas only. What, what I mean is experienced, consistently profitable traders who are quick with their fingers and their brain, and they have lots of agility because we could get some nice tightening ranges on Twitter for incoming volatility. So I would watch Twitter and I would stay within these confines, the high of 4608, the low of 3351, and then marking either your support resistance levels or your synthetic support resistance levels in the form of fibs. Yeah, I can look at AMC and Jason will get started, I believe in six minutes in the chat room. Getting a little bit more of a short squeeze on AMC and GameStop this morning. Plenty of room for a four-hour high or low. But bears will be waiting up here. Your first resistance, 1260 and 1371. Odds favor a pullback, but we have enough room for a higher low compared to 1055. Yeah. Well, can't type. That looks good. And when your husband says that, if you come out dressed for date night and he says, eh, that looks good, then you know you don't look good. So I, I said that was square because I know what this monthly chart looks like, a bear flag confirmed. So I know this chart is trashed on other time frames. Man, look at that. That's some nice bull divergence. And if you're a TCG member, you saw that I posted the bull divergence on, on the market yesterday. And it helped my trading so much yesterday. Now, I don't trade just on bullish divergence alone. The market internals, I had multiple things that were helping me 
piece together the puzzle to look long yesterday. And I told y'all that early in the morning, but this, this is some nice bull divergence. Wow, on the weekly. Enough room for a four hour higher low. Enough room for hourly higher low. Bottom fishing in the $72 area. I've, I always check Bitcoin, always, always, always. So Bitcoin has a very healthy bounce. We're about 75% off the lows compared to this high over here of 32185. Your next resistance is 3098990, 31,000 psychological, then 31980 support 30069. Y'all have been amazing. Thank you for joining. Oh, VB Richmond, well, welcome. Hamburglar, let's look at Beyond for positively positive because they're positive. Okay, Beyond got whacked on earnings. Had a little bit of a short squeeze yesterday. 2526 keeps a bull flag alive on a four hour time frame, but super ugly one, just really ugly. Support 2611. If you, here's how I would trade this. If you get to 2399, I'd be looking to sell an iron condor. That was one large range yesterday. Iron condor means fixed range where you sell. Let me move over here. So if you have a large range, here's the high, here's the low. And you're in the middle of that range here. Let's call this the 50%. You can do an iron butterfly is what I like to do, where you sell a call spread and you sell a put spread. And you're saying you don't think it'll get out of this range for whatever time period that you have your expiration date. You're welcome. You have a great weekend, Tammy. Love y'all. You stop losses, TCGers. I'll see you in the room and I'll be live midday at 10 a.m. my time, noon Eastern.